Hello, my dear Celt girls. I wish you were here, but you're not. So, we're doing U sub, U substitution. It is another way to take an integral when it's a little bit more complicated. So first we have to remind ourselves about the chain rule, which I know you might be thinking, the chain rule is for derivatives, we're talking about antiderivatives, but I promise you it is kind of important. So the chain rule worked when we had composition of functions. If we had something like y is equal to f composed with g of x, something inside something else. So remember, for example, like cosine of x cubed. And the chain rule said y prime is equal to the derivative of the outer with the inner still inside times the derivative of the inner thing. So in this case, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x but we keep x cubed still there, times the derivative of x cubed, so 3x squared, or if we clean this up, negative 3x squared times sine of x cubed. That is the derivative. Well, what if the thing we're trying to do is take an antiderivative, go backwards? What if we're given something like this? Specifically, what if our problem looks like this? Now maybe you're looking at that and seeing, oh, I see. It's the reverse of the chain rule. And maybe you already know what the antiderivative of this thing would be. But you might not. If you're looking at this and you're thinking, the antiderivative of this would be sine of x cubed. You might be right. Sine of x cubed, and we also need a plus c. Well, let's check our work. The derivative of sine is cosine. We keep the x cubed still there, and we multiply it by the 3x squared. Hey, look, we're correct. And that's great. But I don't know that you would have thought about that because, realistically, you probably wouldn't have considered it if we hadn't just done pretty much the exact same problem. So let's do this same problem using a method called u-substitution. I'm going to walk you through an example first, then we'll do general steps and we'll try one more example. This, again, is a method known as u-substitution otherwise shortened to use of. We start this problem by selecting a u. This value for u is something I will tell you about a little later, like what values to pick. But for now, trust me, I am going to say u is equal to x cubed. u will always be something in the problem. I am going to then use implicit differentiation to find the derivative of this. Or du is equal to 3x squared dx with respect to x. And I am going to solve for dx here. My goal, let me take a moment off to the side, my goal is to get rid of all of these pieces in here and make this something that is just in terms of u. So I could even start with this and say I really have the integral of 3x squared times cosine of u right now, right? Because we said u is x cubed, but we still have it with respect to x. And now here's a problem. I have two different variables. I don't want that. So I'm going to keep going with the information I have here to try and change all of these x's to be with respect to u. Okay, so if I want to solve for dx, because I need to get rid of this dx, then I'm going to divide both sides by 3x squared here. du divided by 3x squared is equal to dx. And now I can plug this in for my dx right there. I'm going to erase this line now, but you get the point. 
So now I really have the integral of 3x squared times cosine of u. Instead of dx, I'm going to write du all over 3x squared. And this is great because guess what happens? Look, we have 3x squared in the numerator and the denominator, and they cancel. So now I'm left with the integral of cosine of u with respect to u. And now this is very simple. The antiderivative of cosine is really sine. So I have sine of u plus c. And here's where I go back to the beginning then. And I had said originally u was not u. It's really x cubed plus c. And that's my solution. And I'm done and I'm happy. And if we think about it, that's what we wanted. When we go back up here, that's what we thought we would get a solution to be. So we should be pretty pumped that we saw that. Let's talk about the general steps we just took, and then we will do another example. Step number one is going to be to pick your U. Pick U. Generally, we want to pick something whose derivative is in the original function. We'll get back to that in a moment. Step two, then, would be to find du, or the derivative of u, but this is with respect to x. So you should have du is equal to whatever that derivative is times dx. Step three, solve for dx. Step four, substitute everything in and simplify. Step five would be to solve the integral. And step six would be to substitute back in x. General steps. Go back and pause if you need. Otherwise, we're going to do one more example today. Here's our problem. The antiderivative of x cubed times the square root of x to the fourth plus 5 with respect to x. I quick dragged in the steps here, so now we can at least talk them through together. Step one is to pick a u. And remember I said, something whose derivative is in the original. So your two thoughts might be, I can make u this piece, or I can make u this piece. But if we consider one of those, we'll cancel the other out. Think about it for a moment. Which should be our u? Hopefully, you're saying u is equal to x to the fourth plus 5. If you did, you're correct. Step 2 then is to find du, the derivative of u, or 4x cubed times dx. Now we're going to solve for dx. dx is really du divided by 4x cubed. And now I have all the pieces I need. I have this. I have that. I'm going to use my original integral and substitute those in. So I really have the integral of x cubed times the square root. I don't have to make it that big because it's really just the square root of u. But instead of dx, I'm going to say du over 4x cubed. This is great. My x's are going to cancel. So I have x cubed, x cubed. I really have the integral. I'm going to make this 1 fourth a coefficient. 1 fourth times the square root of u du. And this is not a bad integral. 
We can do a couple other things before we make this uh, official. But we can pull the one fourth out front, so we don't need to worry about it till the end. The integral of u really to the one half du. So now take a derivative. What would this be? Excuse me, take an antiderivative. I said derivative. Oh my goodness. I've made so many of these this morning, so my brain's a little mush right now. Anyway, we take our antiderivative. So I really have one fourth, I'm not going to lose that, times u to the three halves times two over three. All of that plus c. I'm going to take this and I'm going to simplify. So I really have two, and this is going to cancel. So I'm going to really have one sixth u to the three halves plus c. And my last step would be then to sum back in u. So one sixth x to the fourth plus five to the three halves plus c is our final answer. I am not going to do this right now, but if I wanted to, I could check my answer by taking the derivative of this thing and seeing that it indeed was this piece right here. However, I'm just going to tell you, that's it. You're correct. Try the problems assigned for homework, and I will talk to you soon. soon.